Okay, so I thought I'd just take a few moments to give you a little tour of my workshop and uh, just just uh, sort of give you uh, some context for my coming videos. Uh, so here it goes. <clears throat> now the workshop is actually 24 square meters or thereabouts, which seems quite big until you consider the things that I've crammed in here and all the things it has to do for me so not only is it the workshop i use for making my bending irons and other tools it's also my domestic diy workshop it's also my guitar making and repairing workshop it's also my automotive repair and it has to do all sorts of other domestic tasks as well and i've you know filled up quite a lot of the floor space with things um and you know, it's it. Uh, I have to manage to use the space really well, and a lot of things have got dual purpose or even multiple uses, which uh, I'll try and show you as I go around. I'll give you a bit of an idea how it works. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to move forward, and that's the door we've just come in, and I'm going to move in an anti-clockwise direction to give a little, little bit of form to what I'm showing you, and so it's not too abstract. Uh, yeah, there's a piece of blue rope hanging on the wall and there are a load of guitar templates or plantellas. Um, some are guitars that I've made, some are for guitars that I aspire to make. And here is my faithful start right bandsaw. And my tool cabinet which is full of spanners and sockets and automotive tools. Generally that's my car repair toolkit if you like, but it's also... All the spanners and sockets I use to maintain my machines and to assemble things and, and that sort of thing. So uh, that cabinet's on wheels, which is handy because I can move it out of the way, also move it where I want it to go. My bandsaw is also on wheels. That's a sort of all right place for it, generally speaking. But sometimes it's in the way for using this bench. And sometimes if I want to use a cut a long piece of wood, I have to move it. And um, sometimes I turn it and then point the piece of wood out through the door which is gives me some extra space there on the wall we've got a very smotly crew of tools some very dodgy looking saws and a ragtag selection of chisels this space here is my guitar making bench but it also doubles as my general woodworking bench it also sometimes doubles as a very big shelf um, it's also where I do quite a bit of uh, bending iron, final assembly, um, all sorts of things. Because it's it's the biggest bench in the workshop. And it's it's complete with a wood vice and an engineering swivel vice. So it, it's quite a versatile space, really. But it's, it's surrounded by most of my guitar making stuff. And uh, in the shelf above there, and moving along, is my guitar making wood. So I've got, you know, uh, cedar and spruce soundboards and hardwood backs and sides, necks, mahogany and uh, cidrella there, a big selection of yew and some cherry. And on the little shelf just below, there's lots of blanks for fingerboards, head veneers, um, uh, bridges, that sort of thing. And there's more stuff in that cupboard there. Those um, those things are on, hanging on that cupboard door there are mainly sort of... Um, Planing shoes for various things. That one, that one on the left is for doing linings. Um, I'll show you that at some point. There's a guillotine there I use for cutting veneers. Um, lots of bobbing clamps, assembly clamps there. And under the bench lives my boat, my inflatable boat, and that's where that lives. You can see in the corner there, there's all sorts of things, some clamping boards or gluing boards. A couple of soleras there, some long clamps, and there's a guitar that's in for repair, which might feature in another video in the future. Moving along here, here's my wood turner lathe, wood turner chisels there, um, and at the moment the uh, metal cutting shear is fixed on there. It's a temporary fixing. It sort of lives there because I use the metal shear more than I use the wood turning lathe, but it's held on by G cramps, so. Um, this handle here comes off 
and I can unclamp it and it can go under my bench out of the way if I want to use the wood turning lathe. Um, then I've got some drums uh, which I use the wood turning lathe as a drum sander which I may show you in another video in the future. Uh, that cupboard there houses most of my DIY tools um, so trowels and paint brushes and uh, electric drills and plumbing tools things like that. Uh, up on the top of that cupboard there there's a couple of incomplete guitars and some more Soleras a couple of boxes of my stock bobbin clamps which are for sale on my website and uh, and a set of vacuum gauges just randomly and a spirit level um, toolboard there and uh, my main stock of twist drills and all sorts of gubbins in a really nice uh, set of drawers that I, I really like and at the bottom is a big drawer where I keep a lot of my veneers okay so moving along here there's my Alba Shaper which I use for some bending iron um, shaping. I, I used to use shapers exclusively and I used to have two. I used to use them simultaneously but actually they take a while to do the work and, and I've got a nice big milling machine now which is much quicker but uh, the shaper is very versatile so I use it for quite a few things. The green cupboard there holds again some more specialist automotive tooling uh, some air tools, solvents, um, some of my stock, hammers, angle grinders, uh, abrasive tools, that sort of thing. Uh, there's all sorts of gubbins up there. And Medins drill. Medins drill's a uh, cool, cool device there and it's powered by um, a variable uh, frequency drive there which gives me uh, lots of speeds in between my main five speeds uh, which is really handy for all sorts of things metal cutting bandsaw not one of the highest quality it's actually a, a clarky one but uh, I've done a subtle modification to the vice there which means I can hold some slightly bigger and more awkwardly shaped work than I could as standard which is very helpful to me and I'll explain more about that later just behind it there is a roller stand which helps me support long pieces of work in the in the um, bandsaw. Its position there is not doesn't immediately appear to be logical, but I'm often cutting short pieces, and so where it is is out of the way, and I can cut pieces up to about 400 mil long before they hit the wall over there, and I, and I can cut off a three meter length. Uh, if I pass it under that bench there um, but it is on wheels as you can probably see down there so when I want to cut longer pieces I pull it out into this space and I have the whole length of the workshop where I can pass a, a six meter bar uh, even if I have to put it outside through the door um, generally speaking when I when I have a five or six meter bar delivered um, the first thing I do is cut it in half and put it in my little bar rack over there behind the lathe. Um, so, back to this corner. Um, what I've got? Oh, massive collection of pliers and my service grinder. So, this is a uh, brand shop. I think it dates to the 40s. So it's American made, but uh, quite interestingly, according to this plaque here, the motor and uh, spindle assembly is from Bonham and Turner in Mansfield, a local company. Um, I don't know if that dates back to the same period. I suspect it does, or it may have been a more recent replacement. I don't know, but it's quite interesting. Uh, the company is still going. Over here, lots more stuff, uh, rags, some wheels that I'm for some projects I'm working on, some of my stock, my faithful Harrison lathe which dates to the 50s, and it's sort of the centre of the workshop really, the Harrison lathe, 
um, it's so it's used in almost everything I do and make it's such a great workhorse moving around here I mentioned the a bar stock and I've got here my sandblaster which is a new acquisition I'm going to do a couple of videos experimenting with that I'm looking at using that for metal finishing to get an even finish particularly on aluminium but that will be a subject of a future video that stood on a folding welding table which I use for my welding this unit doesn't normally live here it's there when in use because it's blocking the front door um, so the welding table folds and goes out of the way and I put the sandblaster elsewhere when it's not in use but that's set up for me to do some experimentation with moving around here got the Henry Mills milling machine which is the beast which chunks out most of the bending irons uh, amongst other things I, I use it for all sorts it's such a great machine and it's so heavy and torquey um, over here is all my bits and pieces of the milling machine but that's my the main cutter I use for, for taking off the waste of the bending irons and, and getting the machining uh, the flats on them the big bean where I put all my aluminium scrap for recycling compressor I use that obviously for the uh, sandblasting also for paint spraying for blowing down blowing dust off things etc um, and I've got a few air tools which uh, it's also useful for lots and lots of gubbins on shelves this is uh, lots of uh, components here for bending irons in particular or other units as well all my templates from my bending irons are there and all the in these wooden drawers all the heaters thermostats fittings and uh, this is my sort of main assembly bench so we've got an engineering vice on there we've got an offhand grinder and it's being used as a shelf at the moment this is work in progress so we've got here some bending irons which have been roughed out so they've they're faceted at the moment but they're they're shaped so they're ready to be uh, cleaned up they've come off them in the machine then we've got some uh, some more here that are sort of destined to be machined and i mentioned earlier that i made a, a modification to my uh, metal cutting bandsaw to allow me to hold uh, some of some of these shapes and that's because when I do these big bending irons, this one is a, a cello bending iron. Um, it's got really wasteful pieces, so I've, I've managed to adapt my uh, bandsaw so I can cut off pieces like this, which can then be used. So I've got the cello bending iron out of this uh, six inch piece. I've also got a violin bending iron and a three inch Brady bending iron out of the same piece of material. And minimize the waste that's going for scrap it's not really minimised the time because the bandsaw takes quite a while to cut through that. Um, but I always feel it's better to use that than it for to go, go in chips and then be recycled. Similar thing here. I've got another piece there which actually is marked up on the other side. For, um, and I don't know what that is. I think it's a violin bending iron there. Just here we've got some of the boxes. That I've made up. These are ready for cleaning up and and uh, and assembly. Um, a few people have asked me why I've stopped using the diecast boxes that I used to use, so I'll briefly explain that. This is one of the diecast boxes here. Um, when I used to make the bending irons before, these webs uh, in the corners were much more sturdy with a much much more material in them. Um, and now that's a M4 hole and I can't really enlarge that there's not enough material there for me to get an M5 or an M6 thread in there and it's just far too light and weak also the the, the wall thickness here is barely two millimeters and I used to have issues when the bending iron was fastened on here of it flexing backwards and forwards in use to combat that I used to put two strips of steel across here uh, which the mounting bolts went through to spread the load on the top um, and these these things combined and also the price of these now at uh, £10.50 plus a VAT um, 
became a bit, uh, to me a bit ridiculous, particularly if they are not up to the job really. I looked around for some replacements for the finding, so I went with the fabricating them. So I'll just briefly explain that, how that works. Start with a piece of four inch aluminium channel, which is cut to length for the box. And then I cut some two inch pieces of uh, one eighth by two inch flat aluminium and that's welded yeah uh, once that's done in each corner I weld some half inch square aluminium which is pre-drilled to accept an M6 thread and then I just lightly skim the whole of that surface in the milling machine to make it nice and flat and just and stand well and then we end up with with this so we've got it welded all the way around ready for being cleaned up it's machined flat on the bottom and in each corner welded in uh, some nice sturdy pieces of half inch aluminium with an m6 thread in there so they, they got four sturdy mounting bolts moving along this way i've got some some pieces uh, ready cut to make some long reach clamps they uh, need to be drilled yet to offset the, the screws and, and but they are assembled in this in this jig so these three pieces are held in a jig like that um, once they're drilled and because i weld them after they're drilled um, the steel rod is put through here through the drillings to ensure that the the holes are lined and then it's clamped down and the jigs con is constructed such that i can weld this joint, this joint, and flip over and weld the other side. I can weld the ends and then I pop it out of the, uh, the jig and then do a fillet on the inside corners. And that's how I put those uh, together. So, moving along, we have welding corner. I've got a very old uh, Sealy MIG welder there, which is mainly used for automotive repairs and stuff. And my new TIG welder, which is ACDC Pulse TIG. It also does manual metal arc, and it also does plasma cutting, and uh, argon I use for that. So this is the welder I use for welding the boxes together and the long reach clamps. Some of my welding supplies up there, other PPE and other equipment. This is my other sort of main assembly bench. This is like the clean assembly bench. This is where I do a lot of the electrical connections on the bending irons and other things like that. There are various components in drawers and stuff there. And then there's another little narrow bench here, um, which gets used for all sorts of things, really. I've got a selection of abrasives and then a lot of my woodwind tools and materials that are sort of in accessible storage at the moment so not, not, I'm not doing a lot of woodwind at all um, I'm not going to get rid of that stuff that's something I might sort of revisit so it's all there accessible ready when I want it um, over here this is sharpening corner so I've got my wet and dry grinder there various oil and water stones diamond laps things like that and it's Handy that that's right next to and a ready source of water. So um, at some point I'm, I'm going to do a video on sharpening, mainly around chisels and plain irons. Um, from the point of view of, um, it doesn't have to cost you a fortune to have sharp tools. There are, there are cost effective ways of keeping your short tools sharp and usable. So moving right along. Yep. Hand washing and stuff, very useful to have hot and cold water and hand washing facilities in the workshop. Particularly when you're going from doing something dirty to something clean, um, it's a must. You don't want dirty marks on your nice white wood and things like that. Bit of PPE there, dust masks, glasses, gloves, aprons. And my big coil of <laughs> fretware and uh, my spare bandsaw blades all hanging on the wall. My ancient ancient and 
<laughs> dehumidifier that's had a very hard life. I don't use it very much because I, I tend to have very good um, humidity in the workshop. Um, it's been built uh, as an extension to the house with a bedroom above and the spec is in you know, cavity walled and everything. And if we go over here, I've got no heating on at all today. Um, and it is April just. And we're at 14.2 degrees C and 51% humidity, uh, which is quite acceptable. I'm, I'm, I'm quite comfortable working in that temperature and the humidity is certainly really fine for doing guitar work and for keeping my machines and tools rust free. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, please like and subscribe if you want to see other things. And do leave me a comment if there's anything you want to see. Um, or if you've got any ideas for videos you want me to do. Thanks for watching.